welcome back to Spaced Out Radio's Cryptid Tales. My name is Amber Beckroot, and today we are going to be talking about something that I honestly had no idea was a thing. Well, that thing today is the Foo Fighters. Now, no, I am not talking about the band, although it makes me wonder if that's how they got their name, because I've never really looked into it. But if they did get it from this, I would be so excited about that. Now, let's give a little bit of backstory on this one. First off, Foo Fighters, the word Foo, actually originated back in the 1930s during a comic strip that was showing around that time called Smokey Show, which was being, which was a cartoon about a fireman and it had a lot of foo signs and puns and a lot of other things. Well, fast forward a few years and the term foo was then coined by a radar operator in the 415th Night Fighter Squadron by, by the name of Donald J. Myers, who, by as it was agreed by mo most of the squadron, gave the Foo Fighters their name in the first place. So what exactly does the Foo part of Foo Fighters have to do with a cartoon strip and a radar operator? Well, that's where it comes in about the war. Back during World War II, as we know it, it was a very oppressive time in the world. And well, there seemed to be a little more going on than just a war on Earth. During this time, there were actually increased sightings of UFOs and other unidentified objects in the sky, as well as alien sightings that nobody can quite explain. So, what then came about was these objects had to have some form of name because people kept being sent out to investigate. Thus coined the term the Foo Fighters. The first sightings occurred in November of 1944 when pilots were flying over Western Europe and they began to see strange orbs of light in the sky that had no other explanation or origin. These orbs were flying around at great speeds, moving back and forth, and were just all around odd. They varied from red, white, orange, and yellow colors, and some described them as the Christmas lights on a tree, or just odd in general, moving so fast and seeming to taunt the aircrafts by going as fast as it could towards it and then taking off in a different direction and altogether vanishing. Now, this is all pretty odd if you ask me, and honestly, it just gets odder. Pilots and radar operators reported that these objects flew in very controlled patterns as if they were controlled by something of greater intelligence. They also acted completely hostile towards all of our aircraft, which then made everybody very, very concerned for their safety. However, these objects could not be outnumbered nor shot down, and after time they started being known as the Kraut Fireballs by the, by the European Theater of Operations. But for the most part, they were called Foo Fighters. Well, the military took it one step further, thinking that these were actually secret German weapons of mass destruction, but could also never find any proof to point that out. Then again, on December 13th of 1944, the Supreme Headquarters Allied, Allied Expeditionary Force in Paris put out a statement. Now, this statement caused a lot of uproar because it described these strange occurrences as confirmed German weapons of destruction. This was posted in places such as the New York Times, and then the follow-up articles after that started coining the term Foo Fighter as well and continued to use it from there on. In January of 1945, a report was actually put out by another newspaper calling them Foo Fighters and saying that they had actually been following U.S. Air Force planes for over a month and were causing all kinds of havoc. The balls of fire phenomenon that was reported by the Pacific Theater of Operations weren't described as the same thing as the Foo Fighters, but for all intents and purposes, it kind of just was. 
Of course, post-war era, the Robertson panel declared that the Foo Fighters, as cited in previous articles, was not actually threatening nor menacing in any manner to any aircrafts, but still didn't deny their existence, which means that maybe they found a little bit more out about these Foo Fighters than they actually wanted the public to know in the first place. Multiple sightings happened, of course, over a very long period of time during the war, including, including a sighting that happened in India all the way back in 1941. So three years earlier than this term actually started getting coined. Now, the only reason I say technically happened is that there's no definite proof that it was the same thing, but it was very, very similar. And of course, this report came from the deck of the SS Pulaski, which was a Polish merchant ship that was transporting British troops. Two soldiers reported seeing a greenish glowing orb that looked like the size of half of a moon. They alerted a British officer who then came out onto the deck and watched the object with them for two and a half hours. That's a really long time, if you ask me. Charles R. Bastian then also reported seeing the Foo Fighters over the Netherlands and Belgium for a long period of time, traveling at excessive speeds and, again, just hanging out. Also, a career U.S. Air Force pilot by the name of Dwayne Adams also reported two instances that he encountered of a bright ball of light keeping pace with his aircraft before, for over half an hour before taking off into the sky and disappearing altogether. Both of these happened over the South Pacific post-World War II, but just after, and were seen by the entire aircraft crew. So what exactly are these Foo Fighters? What happened? Are they actually intelligent alien life, well, intelligent crafts? Or are they just weather anomalies? Of course, because it happened over such a long period of time, it is really hard to say whether or not they are just weather anomalies or if they actually are aliens. Given the fact that they change speed, direction, and altogether size and shape and color, some other theories suggest that it could be a version of St. Elmo's fire, so just electrical charges coming off of the aircraft wings and interacting with the atmosphere. And others say that maybe there were actually weapons being fired towards the aircrafts from somebody. We don't really know who, but to show up in so many different places seems a little fishy for me to actually have it be some form of weapon or anything like that. Honestly, I don't think it would be St. Elmo's Fire either. While light and electricity is unpredictable, I don't think it has the ability to intelligently change its direction, speed, size, shape, or light color. Um, so I don't know. It's really hard to say what these Foo Fighters are and it's just another mystery to add to the pile. So I wanna know what you guys think. Have you experienced a Foo Fighter type of deal or do you know somebody who was there during World War II who might have told you stories about things that they saw in the sky? I'm really curious, so please let me know down below what you guys think, have seen, or would like to see. That is it for me today. I would like to give a huge shout out to Ron Bumblefoot Thal to thank him for all of the music here on Spaced Out Radio. And of course, don't forget to check us out on all of our social media as well as my own. There are big things coming in the future and I will see you guys in the next episode. I'm so excited about this one. See ya.